On this episode, I talk about influencers, I talk about the law, and we hear fire engines. You keep asking questions, I'll keep trying to answer them. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and you're watching the Ask Gary V Show, episode number 28. Fun fact about the number 28, that is AJ's birthday, January 28th, and it is the single number that I made the most money on roulette in my entire life. So obviously a couple episodes ago we did a live audience kind of play when I was at an event, so I decided to try it out one more time right behind the piggyback. Little quick note, I know a bunch of you expect me to be really sad since I was sad a couple episodes ago after a Jets loss, and the Jets lost 31 to nothing yesterday. But Steve, as you know, very close to the prediction I made of 37-7. You're noticing a happy energy today because here's the difference. A lot of you who sat through Wine Library TV years and the Jets know that when I decide the season's completely over, I'm actually not that upset. I've hit my pain point, I'm dead, and now I'm really looking on to next year. So from here on out, I won't be that grumpy. All right, got some dudes together for today's show. So somebody just jump right in. Let's get right into it. Sure. Your name? Kyle Cummings. Kyle. Say hello to the Vayner Nation. Hi everybody, I'm Kyle with Locker Dome. Uh, I run brand partnerships at Locker Dome. Awesome. Um, you can reach out to me at lockerdome.com slash Kyle Cummings. I like the plug, Kyle. Go ahead, what's your question? Yeah, absolutely. So you've been in the influencer space for just over a year specifically with Grape, Grape Story. Story. And with that business model, uh, what are the biggest challenges you're facing in scaling that business model? And what is the, uh, the brand that you would say is embracing that model for marketing with mobile and those channels, Twitter, Snapchat and Instagram specifically. Which brands are doing a good job in those yeah. channels using influencers? Yep. Uh, I think a lot of brands are starting to do it well, right? Like any brand that's not doing it well is losing, but I think our GE client was first to jump, did a really good job. Virgin Mobile's done a really good job. I think Hewlett Packer right now, Samsung. There's a lot of brands I think that are getting the value of influencer. The problem with scaling my business is we're a talent agency, right? And so these guys get and gals get built up we build up with them and they get too big and they want to go to CAA or things of that, that nature. And so unlike Niche, which is an investment I that's building technology in a platform, you guys, like mm-hmm. there's people that are doing it smarter than me. Um, the model issue for me is, you know, it's just client service, it's just people. You only have the leverage for so long. But it's no different than CAA or William Morris. If you're the best and you're good at it, there's a real business there. But that is clearly the challenge. To make this an overarching question for everybody, When you decide to build a model where you're not building an asset, which is technology or something of that nature, you're only vulnerable to your sources. It's being an accountant or a lawyer or an agency. You're only as good as your last billing cycle. And that's why those businesses don't get the higher multiple. That's why people want to build technology companies. Um, For me, I love people and so, I'm always gonna have a competitive advantage betting on my strength, which is people interaction. So I like building those businesses, but I gotta tell you something, it's really not for everybody and there's definitely a huge vulnerability in it. Cool. Cool, man. Thanks, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Next, let's go. Get in here. Let's go, here we go. Awesome. Hey, I'm Jordan Moran. I've been a huge fan of yours since the Wine Library days. Thanks, brother. Thank you for having me. Of course, say hello Uh, to Vayner Nation. Hello, guys, pleased to see you. Uh, So my question for you is, I am transitioning to a new project management role in the company. Okay. Um, How do you maintain having high standards with your team, making sure things get done, but still keeping the project on time and on budget? I wish Aaron Baer was here from uh, VaynerMedia because he's the head of uh, all that at VaynerMedia and he's killing it. You know, I think it takes humanity. I think the answer is humanity. I actually think the best way to be a great project manager or get things done is to be a great listener instead of talker, right? You go into this new role, I see with a lot of my project management people, they're organized, they're good, but they want to talk it to success. I actually think it's the drop down, flip it and reverse it. I think it's a Missy Elliott structure. I think the way you win is by listening to the people of to why they're not doing well, why are they two weeks behind. If you haven't actually apply empathy and understand what's going on there, you become known to everybody as the project manager that gets it. it. And so I, I say you walk in with not your architecture and organization and like I'm gonna guide this, you're gonna guide it with your ears more than your mouth and that is something most project management oriented people only learn later in life and realize is the key factor. Got it, thank All you, right? appreciate it. Thanks for those kind words, I'm glad you got on. Yeah, thank you. All right, next, let's go. Let's keep this going. 
Hey Gary, Max, nice to meet you. Max, real pleasure. Say hey, what's hey, up to everyone? Hey, what's up? So uh, I co-founded a company called Shimmer, and we're just building a bunch of assets around like the social media influencer space. Okay. So like, as you know, you work for the space, it's really raw. Yep. So what do you think like the biggest opportunities are that are currently untapped? In the in social media influencers? Yeah, like obviously there's brand agencies, there's events, yep. all that stuff. But like, where do you think like the next, you know, I guess like the next big thing can be in the space. I'm gonna go overarching. I know we already had an influencer question, yeah. so I like how this is working. Were you like, holy crap, he asked yeah, way too, like, were you pissed? Thunder, like, Dude, that's yeah. not cool. So. That's why I gotta go first. Yeah. Uh, to me, this is the biggest thing that people don't understand about the influencer space. Not only do influencers create content, they create distribution. So for the first time ever, in one entity, you get both things that people want. You know, if you think about television, production companies or movies, Steven Spielberg, but then you need distribution, right? So what I would say is the biggest opportunities for these guys, for you, for me, for everybody who's playing in this space is to recognize that unique principle in today's internet world where they, they actually actually can drive two things and then apply them. The other place that I think there's a huge opportunity to answer your question, to give everybody more information, go a little deeper as I've been trying to go, yeah. is product. Uh, I think that the infomercial space, the leveraging of like, you know, celebrity into product, like I at one point could have easily sold tens of thousands of glassware sets because of my wine influence. I think retail and product call it QVC 3.0, is another place that people need to think about. Okay. Thanks, brother. Appreciate Good luck Gary. to you. Thanks. Stay well. Next. Let's go. What's going on, Gary? Hey, man. I'm Ashish. Um, I'm co-founder of a startup company called Law Trades, and we're a marketplace for legal services. Love so, it. So, um, my question is, is you advise startups, um, you invest in startups, but when startups become inherently competitive with other companies, yes. um, what's your biggest advice to stay ahead of the game? Is it just to give more value than the person behind you? Or, you know, just interested on your thoughts on that. You know, I default as an entrepreneur thinking it's always gonna be competitive. You know, like, I love when people are like, nobody's in our space. I'm like, great. Because if you're good, everybody's gonna be in your space, right? Sure. Like, if you figured something out, you're gonna have plenty of competitors. You know, to me, it's the same old game, right? Like, it's better execution, it's better product, it's better service, it's better everything that's going to actually drive your business. So, I can't give a blanket answer here. This is why VaynerMedia works in a world of Ask Gary V and me putting out content. I can give you general stuff. I'm trying to go deeper and give you more stuff with this format, mm -hmm. but I need to know who your competitors are. So for you, your business, are they bigger entities with more money? Well, you, when you're, when you're David, you don't play Goliath's game. Sure. When you're Goliath, destroy David. Like, like that matchup should have, it should have never gotten to the slingshot. Just squish that guy, right? And so, I, to give the practical advice, it's gotta be something, here's an example, back to depth, something I'm trying to challenge myself in this show. Was anybody else surprised as hell that I barely talked about VaynerMedia for three years? Like, for somebody that's always out there promoting, you notice if you went to VaynerMedia's website for the last two, three years, that it was like nothing there because I was David. And I needed to make sure that the bigger agencies didn't realize how big I was actually getting. That was my competitive play in a competitive landscape. Now that I'm getting a little bit bigger, I'm getting a little bit more out there. I'm putting myself more out there because I have the leverage of having more money to hire the best talent or acquire the biggest clients. So the answer to your question is completely predicated on where you are in your life cycle versus your competitor's life cycle. And what I would tell you is, and here's where I can give the most tangible answer, though still theoretical, never play the other person person's game. Got it. That's where everybody gets, like, oh, that big guy or gal is now running ads, we're gonna too. Problem, they have $10 million, you have $80,000. Yeah. You lost. Yeah. And so it's never play the other person's game. Cool, man, thanks a lot. Real pleasure to meet you. Finally. How are you, Charlie? Charlie, nice to meet you. real pleasure. What's up, guys? Pretty quick question, what's your stance on investing in competitive companies? Meaning? Well, uh, if you, like for me as a fund? You as a Don't, fund, you individually? Dude, Guys, it's gonna be useless audio though. It's not useless audio, it's just a horn. Nobody in the Vayner Nation <laughs> is concerned about a horn. They won't be able to hear the words. They'll be able to hear the word. Do you think they'll be able to hear the words? Yeah, they'll Can we hear the word? I get it, and I love you supporting your teammate D-Rock, and I, I see what you're doing, I love this support. But that <laughs> horn, this, this, this fire truck, is adding to the ambience of the fact that we're like sitting I mean, in New right. York City. Like, we're not sitting in our normal room. They'll deal with it, right D-Rock? All right, thank you. It, it pains you, right? It's like the editor in you just like can't deal 
with them now the horns are coming. You're just, this is just pouring it on you. We're sticking with it. So, if I'm a fund and I, for example, when I was an investor in Gowalla and there was a chance to invest in Foursquare, I didn't, but I know people that have invested in similar companies. Are you asking me like to put my VC hat on? Yeah. An angel hat? You know, look, I think there's two answers. One, I think if you're investing in a company and then there's a chance to invest in somebody who's a direct competitor and that company wants you to do that, that seems like a, <laughs> that, seems, that seems to me like a little bit of a dick move. Mm. What I'm more worried about is the problem I'm facing now. I'll be quiet for you. This is me doing the nice thing for you. But the tape is running. The tape is running. It better be. To me, the bigger problem is the pivot. Mm. Right now, my biggest problem is I'm investing in companies that are a little bit different, but I can see as an entrepreneur how one move by each product gets them into a competitive space. My answer is you go in with the open eyes and honesty that you can, but you can't fight against the fact that people are competing with each other sure. as we now live in a world where the cost of entry to compete with each other is so much lower. Mm. I think you should go in with the right intentions. Your reputation, by the way, the only reason I think you should be a good guy or gal and not invest in a competitor is because your reputation is your equity. Mm. Like it's selfish. It's because I want to be able to invest in things in the future and if I have a reputation for constantly investing in my competitive stuff just to win on short term money, I'm not going to be able to get into deals. Mm. So I think reputation management in a transparent world matters. I think that is a dick move if you're doing that. Gotcha. Do you, is that basically totally answering your question? Sense. Have you? Why did you ask that question? Is that something you're seeing just out there? Just kind of curious. Yeah, I, I co-founded a startup with Max, um, and sometimes we kind of run into that problem. Like people say no because they already invested in like a similar company. Um, and do you view them as a direct competitor no, when that, they that's say the no? That's the problem. Like on paper, they see it as a competitor, but when you dive into it, it's not. Well, that, that's where you guys just have to do a better job in educating people how mm. it's different. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Guys, episode uh, 28 in the bag. There's uh, some fire engines in the background that if you would have seen the, I, we need to go to a second screen environment because if they would have watched D-Rock's pain. Zach, no. Zach, you got his pain? I got some of his pain. I need some of that pain out there. Uh, appreciate the questions today. A lot about influencers. I appreciate that, guys. Uh, question of the day. Who's the biggest influence to you right now that is not in your inner circle? Outside influence, not family, we just did that. Not your mom, your grandpappy who raised you. The biggest influence right now outside of your inner circle that's a new influence in the last 24 months. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. On this episode, I talk about Kickstarter, Twitter, Facebook, and finally, Ello.